Um, hi, um, my name is Steve Baker. I'm the uh, PTL for the HEAT project for the uh, Liberty Cycle, and this is the um, project update for the for, the, for HEAT. Um, so if we go into the uh, first slide, um, we'll just give a quick overview of the general stats of the development pace in the in the Kilo Cycle. You know, there were 74 blueprints implemented, you know, almost 400 bugs. 1,100 code commits from 127 people. So this this just continues the trend of you know this of a, of a well-engaged multi-vendor project. Um, so it's it's uh, quite encouraging um, at, at how much participation we've got uh, in the heat project from a a number of vendors. Um, so just going on to the next slide, um, we've got a a summary of some of the kilo new features. Um, so improved scaling using nested stacks. Um, previously, uh, a, a stack which had a lot of nested stacks or template resources um, was all uh, the operations occurred by loading the entire tree in memory and then um, and then processing the stack in that way. Uh, we now have a uh, an Oslo messaging boundary between every um, every template resource. Uh, this, this allows the uh, resource operations to be spread across multiple heat engines. Um, so, so that's uh, an improvement in, uh, in, in scalability. Um, I'll, I'll talk about convergence later, and how, um, just to describe how this general trend of distributing workloads across heat engines is continuing. Um, we've got some new template functions such as uh, digest and repeat. Um, uh, digest is just a way of uh, uh, Transforming a string into a into a into a digest um, and, and repeat as a, a a construct for uh, combining um, multiple lists, uh, transforming multiple lists into a into a dictionary. Uh, we now support multi-region stacks. Um, you can define a a resource which um, which uh, provisions a stack on a different OpenStack region. Um, this will allow you to, you know, de define a stack that spans regions, um, um, giving you more sort of redundancy in your uh, in your application. Um, we've also got um, ability to pause stack creation and update on a given resource. Um, this is a, a a feature which lets you define um, hooks in in your environment. So that when you bring up the stack, uh, when it when it hits one of these hooks, it will stop, and it won't progress until it gets uh, an explicit signal from from the user or or script that it should continue. Uh, this this has a number of of uh, quite useful use cases. You could use it for debugging. You know, in in that respect, it's a little bit like a, a breakpoint, where if you want it to pause at a particular um, uh, point in the uh, orchestration. Uh, to let you go in and, and uh, manually inspect um, the, the state of the stack. Um, it, it also has use cases for um, large clusters when you want to uh, stagger the, um, the creation of resources, um, whether, whether that's to um, perform some kind of manual validation that the cluster is um, um, doing the correct operation um, before you progress to more nodes in the cluster, or if it's just to um, just to, to, to stagger the, the uh, cluster changes so that uh, you don't have a stampeding herd of, of changes all happening at the same time. So we go on to the next slide now um, and look at the new ki uh, kilo new resources. Um, as usual, we've got a, a Selection of, of, of new resources and features to existing resources. Uh, we're now supporting uh, Noki based solometer alarms. Um, there's a, a Cinder volume type resource, um, which would be more aimed at uh, operators and admins. Um, similarly, uh, we've got um, Keystone resources for defining group project role and user. This is also a, um, you know, a, a more admin focused resource. Uh, the collection of resources, and it's um, it's it's, it's highlighting a, a, a trend that there there seems to be a desire f 
for operators to some operators to um, represent their um, their backend configuration of of their of their clouds um, using heat, which is which is a an interesting development and and, and something that that we will quite likely uh, do more of. Um, we've, we've also got uh, Mistral workflow um, resource and trove cluster. So if we go on to the next slide and and look at the uh, some of the planned new resources for the Liberty cycle. Um, we already have a Barbican resource, um, but but there's, there's some significant enhancements which which makes it make the uh, properties a lot richer. Um, key point, uh, Keystone endpoint and service. So this with 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 those two resources, it's, it's now possible to um, bootstrap an empty Keystone um, using uh, using just just heat templates. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that um, how operators end up. End up using that. Um, we've also got um, Magnum, Designate, uh, Manasco Alarm, and Cinder Encrypted Volume. So there's, there's a lot of new resources coming in. Um, um, traditionally, with uh, we have um, put resources that were from non-integrated projects into our contract directory and not and not officially released them. So if we just go into the next slide, uh, we've just got a summary of um, big tent changes. So now, as as we've de-emphasised the meaning of integrated projects, um, you know, heat, heat has to decide how to how to deal with uh, a, a wide variety of um, OpenStack ecosystem projects uh, implementing heat resources. So traditionally, Contrib was for uh, resources that were from non-integrated projects, and also resources that required admin functionality. Um, in Liberty, the Contrib directory is uh, deprecated. Um, all, all of those resources that are, that are of an appropriate quality have uh, been brought into the heat tree. So if you install heat, uh, you, you have all of, all of these resources. Um, other other big tent changes, uh, the functional integration tests have um, are, are migrating out of Tempest and are moving into the heat tree. Um, this has been quite good because it, it it's, it's raised the profile of functional integration and integration testing, um, and and we're getting a lot more participation from developers in writing those tests. So we've we've, uh, we've built quite a large suite in a, in a fairly short amount of time, and. Uh, just recently, the, um, the template guide, or otherwise known as the hot guide, has moved from the OpenStack uh, user guide into the uh, heat developer um, documentation namespace. Um, again, this, this, should, um, this should result in, some, in, in uh, more participation um, from, uh, from heat developers in, in writing uh, documentation and recipe style content. So going on to um, some more Liberty uh, planned features. Now this is this is sort of related to the um, to the new resources. Uh, now that we have a significant number of, of new resources coming into Tree, uh, we we need to uh, do a better job of of indicating to the user um, what resources are available to them when they uh, when they're launching their stacks. So we'll be doing more sort of resource availability based on user roles and service catalog. Um, what this means is that um, we, we have an, a better ability of uh, giving feedback at the validation stage of, of the stack launching process that, um, that a, a user can or cannot use a particular resource type based on whether the, uh, the, the endpoint uh, is available. Um, but previously, it would still fail, but it would, it would fail quite late in the process because uh, it would only fail when that resource is being created. So yeah, it'll result in a failed stack. But um, but now we're, we're bringing it, bringing it towards the, the the front of the process, so you, you'll, you'll get a validation error before the stack even launches. 
Um, so going on to the uh, next uh, Liberty Plan features. Um, so convergence, it's um, a fairly large effort that we've been working on for a couple of cycles um, to, to rewrite a, a portion of the, the, the core heat engine to um, to it essentially breaks down the orchestration into uh, resource level uh, operations instead of stack level operations. And it, it, it has a number of advantages. Um, it sort of removes the concept of a, of a stack lock. Uh, so you can have multiple stack operations um, in flight at the same time. Um, it, it, it means that operations happen at a resource level um, so that so that each individual resource level operation is spread out over a um, over a, a different heat engine, and it's all coordinated over Oslo messaging, um, and and depends on a on a consistent um, database at the back end uh, to to make sure that the entire stack is in a consistent state. So we're going to have to make a call um, at some point in the Liberty cycle whether we enable this feature um, for the Liberty release. I think, conservatively speaking, um, it's not going to be enabled by default. Um, it's being developed. Um, it's, it's maturing in tree, um, so um, we we have you know some uh, quite good momentum, and we're getting some progress on getting the whole integration and functional test suite uh, working when convergence is enabled. But I think, conservatively speaking, um, it's likely to remain uh, switched off for the Liberty release. Um, but there, there may be scenarios where um, where operators would, would would want to enable it just to try it out and see if it works on their on their use cases. Um, so that's that's progressing quite well, but it's it's, it's hard to say at this point um, how how ready it's going to be for the Liberty release. Um, so going on to the um, next Liberty plan features. Um, There'll be a selection of um, new template intrinsic functions uh, to help with uh, transformation from um, one arbitrary uh, data, data structure to another. So, you know, lists, you know, lists to dicts, you know, strings to everything. Um, there, there may be a new uh, YAML-based um, intrinsic function, which will let well, YAML is the um, Yet another query language library that's come out of the um, Murano and Mistral projects, I believe. Um, we have a proof of concept for that, so so we're, we're not quite sure um, how that will pan out, but um, it's, it's, it's something we'll, we'll evaluate. And and being able to specify. Um, YAML expressions within within each templates um, could give some quite nice um, expressibility in uh, in composing templates. Um, and finally, on to uh, the Zakar slide. So there's, there's been a real push to to um, adopt Zakar across a number of OpenStack projects, and we see this as a good thing. And and it looks like it's, it's, it's definitely the right time for this to happen. So, so one area where this will be happening in the uh, Liberty cycle is using the car for um, the software configuration transport. Uh, what this means is that um, Nova servers that are that are brought up um, need to um, talk to Heat to fetch the configuration data um, that's required to do whatever subsequent software configuration, whether that be um, shell scripts or puppet manifests or um, whatever software config hook they have on their servers. Um, so our, our, our current transports are, are either um, talking directly to heat or um, fetching from a uh, Swift temp URL. Um, but the next but you know, ideally, what we need is a, is a, a proper messaging platform, because this is a, a you know a, a perfect scenario for for messaging. Um, so, um, in Heat, we will support the car as an option for uh, for these transports. So, Nova servers will um, 
will fetch configuration data from a Zakar queue, and um, and when it needs to signal heat, it will uh, put just push push a message into a different Zakar queue, um, and that and that will be uh, eventually fetched by heat um, to allow the uh, software configuration to be um, driven by messaging. Um, and there's, there's there's other areas where um, heat would benefit from the car integration. Um, it's, it's too early to say at this point whether this will happen for Liberty, um, but user notifications is a, uh, a something that's strongly desired. Um, just a, a mechanism for telling users about things that are happening in their stack but which uh, don't justify, you know, halting the stack and returning an error. You know, things like uh, notification of use of deprecated resources, um, notification of, of, of events. Um, we currently have an uh, event API in HEAT, um, but it's, it, would, it would be a much better uh, implementation if it was uh, driven by the cast or message queue. Um, but a, a lot of other OpenStack projects would benefit from um, this kind of user event notification as well. Um, so there's a there's a push to make it a uh, cross-project spec rather than a heat-specific thing. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll see how that progresses. There, there, there might be something that emerges in, in Liberty, um, or it might take a, an extra cycle to, to to work it out in a way which uh, benefits all projects. Um, so that's it. Um, if you want to contact me, uh, you can uh, email me, sbaker at redhat.com. Um, I'm Steve Baker on Freenode. Um, and you're most welcome to come into the uh, Heat channel on the Freenode network uh, if you have any questions um, about Heat. Uh, and thanks very much. That's it. <laughs>